Greetings, everyone. I just received this. Do you think I should worry? Nah. I don't think so. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Okay, guys. Time to take my mask off. And let's talk about hi-fi. Because today, in this episode, we're going to learn why it's fundamental in order to achieve perfect LP vinyl reproduction, you need a good hi-fi test disc. Okay, guys, let's go. Okay, boys and girls, welcome to Anna Dialogue. Well, yes, this episode is going to focus on why you should purchase, why you should use a test disc, a test LP. Now, I have this one. I think you can see it from Hi-Fi News, but you don't necessarily need this one. Absolutely. Uh, whatever brand or, or type you find it's okay this is a normal disc it's a normal lp vinyl record absolutely i'll just show you because the grooves are slightly different actually i think you can see it it's cool and in my opinion there are we could say four main aspects that make this disc rather precious because I do reach out for it every once in a while. So just so you know, you also have other stuff included like a alignment protract protractor, things like that. So it is a little bit expensive, but not enormously. It's just, I think, uh, over, like two LPs or something like that. In any case, I'll put the price now here. And obviously I'll put the links uh, via Amazon if you're interested. In any case, let's try to understand why this type of record is useful. And it's, it's not just an extra accessory or gizmo you know, that you don't care about. In fact, I do use it a lot. As I said, four main uses. Starting from the less important all the way up to the top one. Okay, so number one, to establish the left and right channel. That's one of the main tracks at the beginning. Yes, of course, you can do that with other pieces of gear. Obviously, if we're talking about the cartridge, then it starts to get difficult because you're not gonna be able to use a CD or, or anything like that. Or you know exactly that a track has, starts with a left or a right sound only, then that you can use that absolutely or you can detach the leads the little cables on the photo cartridge that's also another way you can do this otherwise very simply just use this and it may seem banal it may seem something not that much important but a lot of times you guys i put on the record and i discovered that i mixed up the connections because you have the leads you have the cable going from the tone arm to the phono preamp from the phono preamp to the amp and also you're checking also the ones going from the amp to the speakers the speaker cables so it's a thorough check which is useful and again sometimes you may overlook the use number two is something strictly connected the phase the polarity and this mainly regards obviously the speaker cables in order to know if you have inverted the positive and the negative pole mainly on the amplifier or speakers obviously and again that this is gonna easily help you out if you have done a wrong connection so the first two uses are quite strictly connected but they're different they're separated let's proceed now to point number three point number three is directly connected to 
how you have installed your cartridge. Obviously, if we're talking about um, a tone arm with a, a cartridge you purchased and you add it on. In any case, even the pre-mounted sometimes have issues, so it's always a good idea to try to use this. With a test disc, you can understand there are special frequencies, special tracks uh, that start to vibrate and um, produce a sound on the left or on the right channel, which will give you an idea if by any chance the the position of your cartridge, the cantilever of the stylus is correct, or if it's leaning towards a side or one another. This is also strictly connected to anti-skating because the first thing you're going to try to do, obviously, is to try to reduce or increase anti-skating because the, the devices that the turntable include, I found they never work including the techniques, including something new I have here and I'll soon reveal in the next videos. Uh, in the past, when I was using my other types of uh, turntables, in any case, anti-skating is very hard to establish in a mechanical way. Uh, if you don't want to go the, 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 the hard way and use software like people do, I don't. Too much, too much of a hassle. This is a good, a good thing to do. So, if you put those dedicated tracks and you hear this sort of almost a pink noise on the right or on the left, that means that the stylus is reading incorrectly that track. So the first thing is try to regulate the anti-skating. If that's not enough, that means that the cartridge is not been installed properly, correctly. So this is very, very useful. Again, you're going to need software to establish that otherwise, or the computer and con connecting to different things, analyzing the frequencies, etc., etc. I mean, much more easy. And you can precisely move even the cartridge a little bit, and I, as I said before, the anti skating as well, in order to properly uh, position the cartridge and the stylus. Okay? Remember, I did a video on how to set up a turntable, obviously. I did only one, here's a link. And one of the main features, which I very rarely find in other videos on YouTube, is the alignment of the cantilever, hence the stylus, okay? Not the body of the cartridge. That's not a good indicator because the cantilever, rarely, I would say in my experience, it's perfectly straight. It's always a little deviated, so that's, the thing you have to take into consideration and align, not the body of the cartridge. In any case, take a look at that video where I give a little more details. Okay, let's reach now our fourth and last point. Why this is important, why this has value. It does make sense to have. What am I talking about? Resonance, compliance. I did a video, one of my first actually, where I indicate how to match your cartridge and tone arm. There's all uh, an online um, app where you can insert different values in order to understand if the resonance or resonance, how you say in English, sorry, you know I'm Italian, is proper, is in the right area where, because it, it's always gonna have a, re a resonance, okay? But you want it around a, a specific uh, frequency. It depends, usually eight, nine, 10 hertz. In any case, take a look at that video and you will see, we'll learn how to do that. In order to check if everything was done properly, if you did the right calculations, if the tone arm has the right mass, if the, ma the, the weight, the total weight of both of them does make sense or not, there are some mistakes. If simply they're not a good match, with this, with this test disc, you can understand that because there are some frequencies that will show you physically the cartridge, which is going to start to, reso to, to resonate, to, to, um, to shake. These frequencies are going to start to go through the tone arm and the cartridge, and you're going to hear through the speakers the effect. Now, it should be subtle, but if you really start to see something, the, 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 the whole thing shaking, you probably did not do a good compliance match. 
with the tone arm, etc., etc. Okay, guys. So I think these four points are quite important and sometimes are overlooked, and you can easily check them with something like this. Okay, I hope this was useful. Thank you again for watching, and remember, music was born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.